Jesus Christ, what a mess. Now, mechanically, there's not too much wrong with this front suspension, but it looks absolutely awful, and we do need to attend to this rust before it really takes hold. Now, one nice thing about the Elan is you can remove the complete front suspension as an assembly, and that's what we're doing today. And then in the next video, we'll dismantle it off the car. To get it off, the first thing we need to do is undo this hub nut at the end of the drive shaft. So we need to release this locking tab from the end of the drive shaft. So get an unloved old screwdriver and a big mallet and just drive that out. Now only a complete body would try and reuse a nut like that. So there's the first thing for our shopping list, new hub nut. Then remove the centre cap from the wheel, put the wheel back on, drop the car back down onto the floor, put it in gear, put the handbrake on nice and tight, chuck the wheels, maybe even get someone to stand on the foot brake if you can, get the biggest breaker bar you can find and a 32mm socket and lean on this with all your might. It's a right-handed thread on both drive shafts, both the left-handed and the right-handed drive shafts, both right-handed threads. So with all your might, see if you can get it undone. Oh, I win! In your face! And then no messing with the next bit. When you've got that drive shaft nut undone, then get the car jacked up as high as possible and get it a good axle stand that you trust underneath it. Now, uh, the rough fixing is at the back. We need to undo and remove that bolt, so don't cover that one up with the axle stand. Rest the axle stand on that one, this rear fixing of the engine under tray, the pronger on put the axle stand underneath the head of that bolt. Just like that. Now, before we start attacking this in earnest, just a few notes about tools. Firstly, whenever you're faced with anything that rusty looking that hasn't been undone for a few years, forget about going at it with your 3 8 inch drive regular socket. You just won't get everything undone. They'll just round everything off. It'll be really frustrating. They'll be far too tight and you'll make a mess of the job. So get yourself a breaker bar, a long breaker bar and some quality half inch drive sockets and the extra leverage will make this much much easier. They're not particularly tight these so it's a 60 centimeter breaker bar should get everything here undone. If you are having trouble getting anything undone then what often helps, certainly penetrating oil and anything that is seized and then just leave it to soak for a while will help matters. Um, also, usually when you're trying to get bolts like this undone that are seized, then getting some heat on it from a blowtorch or even an oxyacetylene torch will usually dramatically help to break the seal between the bolt and the nut. However, in this case, try and avoid using heat if you possibly can. The reason for that is that just about all the fasteners here on the suspension are either medium or high tensile steels, which have been heat treated to give them that strength. So if you go at it with a blowtorch hard, and certainly if you go at it with an oxyacetylene torch, you're going to anneal the metal, you're going to permanently soften the metal by doing that. So if you do have to use heat, resort to heat to get anything undone, then either you're going to have to re-temper the metal again afterwards or replace the bolts with suitable replacements but sometimes you just might have to use heat to get them off. Another thing that is very useful is if you've got access to one then an impact driver really helps either a pneumatic one like this or you can get electric types powered by batteries as well. Now they're really useful because what they do is they, they undo the nut and bolt by giving it a very, very rapid succession of short taps. And that helps to break the seal without applying constant leverage to it, which rounds the nut or, or, or the head of the bolt off. So they're really useful if you've got access to one. However, I wouldn't say rush out and buy one just for this job because the problem with them is they're quite big tools. So, you know, you actually you haven't really got that much access to get it in there and use it on many of these nuts and bolts anyway. But if you've got one, they're really, really useful. They certainly speed dismantling everything. You can just spin the bolts out really, really quickly. Other than that though, it's just a bit of patience and a bit of brute force and ignorance. There's, you will need a couple of other tools to dismantle various bits. When we come to dismantling, you're going to need a ball joint splitter, a decent ball joint splitter. I mean, I prefer, I prefer this scissors type, but there are various types available. Get a decent quality one. And then if you want to dismantle the spring and strut assembly, you're going to need a pair of spring compressors as well. But we'll be dealing with all that in the next video. But just so you've got your tools available before you get everything off and find you can't get it back on again. All right, with all that said, let's get on with it. 
First thing we're going to remove is the brake caliper and the disc. So start by releasing the flexible hose where it's attached to the wishbone. And that's just this little plate here is just a sort of interference bit. So get hold of it with a pair of pliers and just it's going to take a bit of manhandling. But it will eventually come out. Sorry if my fat ass is in the way of the camera. Oh, it's not like this when Chris Evans does it, is it? Right, the rest of the job gets easier than that. The bolts that hold the brake caliper on are underneath these two covers that protect the slider. Just knock them off with a hammer and chisel. And then put a 10mm Allen key into the head of the bolt. And they are quite tight, these. Right, they will come up eventually. And then tie the caliper up and out of the way by a piece of wire so it's not dangling by the flexible hose. And then the next thing to remove is the brake disc. Now that should be held on by a countersunk 6mm screw in there, but someone's already sheared this one off in the past and not bothered to replace it. So that will just come straight off and then that's a job we'll have to sort out later. With that done though, next thing is to split the ball joint on the track rod end. So undo the nut on the top of the ball joint with a 19mm socket. Oh, that was nice and easy. I hope that's a sign of things to come. On the left hand side you might have to jack the suspension up to get the angle right so you can get your ball joint splitter in. The right hand side's normally okay though. Now ball joints come in two varieties, those that come undone and those that don't. If it won't come undone, then the if you can't split it, then although I generally said try and avoid using heat, heat is the only way you'll get this to separate. So if you get a blowtorch on the on the steering knuckle here, and then just as that expands, that'll help to, 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 to split it if you're really having trouble getting it undone. This one though is a doddle actually, I can sort of see just putting the ball joint splitter on, I'm not even going to have to use the ball joint splitter, if I just tap the ball joint splitter in I can see already this is going to come apart. The other thing as well is you just have to face, you're probably going to damage the boot putting the ball joint splitter in but boots are really cheap and easy to buy, you don't have to buy a whole new track rod end if you split the boot getting it off. But anyway here we go, just get, it, get the ball joint splitter in there and just put it in and there you go, it's come apart straight away. And then use a 17mm socket to remove that nylock from the ball joint that holds the anti-roll bar on and then release the anti-roll bar. Now, <laughs> unfortunately this one, this ball joint separated as I was undoing it, which I would rather hadn't happened as this is extremely expensive, this bolt, but we should be able to save it. So try, try to avoid that happening if you can, because they are about £130, these bolts, believe it or not. And then next we're going to remove what remains of this bolt that connects the anti-roll bar, the ball joint, the damper yokes and then goes through the lower wishbone. So to do that get a 17mm spanner and there's a flat just there between the ball joint and the damper yoke at the front. Get a 19mm socket onto the nut and undo it and withdraw it. Now the next thing we're going to do is release the top ball joint bolts here so that we can swing this out of the way to get the drive shaft out and get the, uh, the, the suspension strut out. So before you do that make a note of these plates in here are the caster adjusters and make a note of how many you have on each side of the ball joint and then the camber adjusters you'll have two different types depending on how old the car is. This is the later type which uses these plates earlier types use an eccentric headed bolt. Whichever type you've got, as long as you're happy that your ge geometry is correct at the moment, then make a note of how they are so you can put them back in exactly the same position when you take them off. Now on this car with the later type of plates here, I can tell you straight away just looking at this, this has been inexpertly put back together because these plates here, the half moon that you can see at the bottom there, that should either be pointing outwards or inwards depending on what the camber setting is, it should never be pointing downwards, so this has just been slapped back together by some backstreet garages that didn't know what they're doing, so I'm just going to take this apart without paying any attention. I'm going to do another video later on after we've put this together about setting up suspension geometry. And then it's just a 10mm socket on these K-lock nuts. <laughs> If you round out the heads of the bolts when you're taking anything off, then just replace them, don't reuse them. And when you're reassembling everything, use grease on the bolts so that they don't seize. So, we've got 20 minutes into it, but here's the first outing for the angle grinder. <laughs> 
Inside the engine bay, remove these three rubber grommets from the top of the clamshell and then with a 13mm socket loosen the nuts that hold the spring abutment to the turret. But don't touch the one in the middle. Now with the top ball joint released we can get the hub out of the way and the wishbone and then get at these nuts and bolts which hold these two halves of the yokes to the damper itself. So we're going to remove those these four nuts and bolts next. So 10mm socket on the nuts. Then withdraw the last bolt and then remove the two halves of the yoke. Then go and remove the three nuts at the top in the suspension turret that we loosened earlier and remove the strut and add it to that growing pile of rusty parts in the corner of the garage. Now the next thing I'm going to remove is the drive shaft. Now you don't have to remove the drive shaft to get the suspension out but it does make clearance for the rest of the job quite a lot easier and if you're taking the suspension off it's likely that the drive shaft is going to need some TLC at the same time. So remove the hub nut that we loosened earlier at the start. Then slide the drive shaft, it's a spline fit into the hub, so slide the drive shaft out of the hub. Just a minute, or two. And then you can swing the hub clear. Now, Try to let the drive shaft hang from the boot on the inside, so tie it up with wire while we do the rest of the job here. Now, if you're watching the video where we were removing the right hand drive shaft, you'll remember that we were able to knock that off just with a hammer and a plain drift. So we put this end of the drift on the inside edge of the inner tube of the drive shaft and then just hit this end with a hammer and knocked it off. Now, you can't do that with the left hand drive shaft, and the reason for that is the transmission gets in the way, you'll see in a moment. So you have to have a different sort of tool. Now, what you need is a tool where you can, which has got a sort of Z shape, so you've got a hook there and a, a lip there, and you're going to put that onto the inside edge of the drive shaft and then hit this part to knock it off the car. Now this is actually a floorboard puller, it's what you use to sort of pull floorboards together when you're laying them, but if you haven't got one of those, you know, just, just devise something similar. All you really need is a piece of flat steel bar and then put a lip on this end and a lip on that end into a Z shape, you'll, you'll sort of figure something out. So we're just going to hook that tool round the back of the inner tulip like that and then hit this end that you can see in the foreground of the shot that's slightly out of the focus to, to drive the drive shaft off. Now the other thing you need to be aware of though is that the, drive, the left hand drive shaft goes straight into the transmission so when you take the drive shaft out you're going to get a load of gearbox oil coming out so make sure you've got something ready to catch that. More importantly make sure you've got some way of replacing it. Now the gearbox is filled through the drive for the speedometer cable which is very hard to find and even harder to film but but basically you're looking for it just underneath the chassis front cross member directly down there on the back of the engine. So if you have a look down where I was just pointing then that's what you should see. So that cable coming up towards you right out the middle of the picture that's the speedometer cable and the speedometer drive is connected to the end of that going into the top of the gearbox there. Now the white thing that you can see going north to south that is the chassis cross member and in between the two of those you can see the head of a bolt which I've coloured in red. You need to remove that bolt, take that bolt out and then you can just pull the speedometer cable and the speed speedometer drive out of the top of the gearbox and there's a dipstick on the speedometer drive to tell you what the correct oil level is. The only way of getting to it with the suspension on is by putting your hand in between the air filter and in front of the um, hose from the charge cooler there. If you put your arm in down there you can sort of just about reach round the back if you've got arms like an octopus and get a socket onto the head of the bolt. The good news is though that once you've got the suspension off it is actually much easier to go in through the left hand wheel arch. But whatever you do just make sure you've got some way of replacing the gearbox oil before you take the drive shaft off and then as we just described just give it a few taps. It's held on by a circuit, so when you've knocked it off the circuit, you should just be able to slide the whole thing out. There you go. You did remember to put something to catch the oil, didn't you? And then plug the end of the transmission with a clean cloth to prevent dirt getting in there while we're doing the rest of the job. And then we're going to remove everything else as an assembly, so that's the upper wishbone, lower wishbone, the hub, complete with 
this alloy rough that they're fixed to. So all we need to do is release the fixings that connect the rough to the car. The upper of those is this sandwich plate, this diamond shape, shaped sandwich plate. And there's one bolt with a 19mm head which goes in from the wheel arch side and then three bolts with 13mm heads that go in from the engine side. The bolt on the wheel arch side is a little bit tricky because it's a, quite a shallow head and it's done up quite tight but they take a bit of care when you're undoing it not to round it off but it's easy with an impact driver. And the three on the gearbox side, here, here and here, they're not very easy to get to, but fortunately they're not very tight either, so just undo those with a 13mm socket. And sandblasted and zinc plated, they'll be as good as new. We're just two bolts away from victory, just the lower raft fixings to remove, which is this bolt at the back, which goes through the lower raft and into the chassis cross member, and this nut and bolt at the front. <laughs> It is now!